Hi, I'm Sabrina Evans-Ellis, Program Director at the Youth Development Institute, and we're here today to talk about the impact of youth development on school design. According to the Carnegie Corporation's report, Opportunity by Design, the Common Core Standards and the Science Standards represent critically important opportunities for states to educate all young people for success in a global economy. However, the report asserts that standards will only achieve their intended outcomes if education delivery changes and schools are done differently. We know that redesigning schools based on youth development principles can make them more powerful so that students' learning is accelerated and they meet the Common Core state standards. So today we will focus on better understanding what youth development is and how it relates to school design and all things school design encompasses. We're delighted to have with us today Michelle Cahill, uh, who is a leading thinker in youth development, particularly as it relates to school design. Michelle Cahill has more than 30 years of experience in education reform, youth development, and urban affairs work. She served as vice president of the Fund for the City of New York and as senior counselor to the Chancellor for Education Policy in the New York City school system. Uh, in that capacity, she played a pivotal role in the development of children first reforms in secondary education, district redesign and accountability, new school development, and student support services. Michelle Cahill currently serves as Vice President, National Programs for Carnegie Corporation of New York. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you for that glowing introduction. You earned it. Um, so we just want to open up the discussion and start to talk a little bit about um, why youth development might be an important strategy for school redesign. Uh, but I think to do that, it probably helps to discuss what is youth development. Sure. So. Youth development is an ongoing process that all young people, all particularly from early adolescence through the late teens, uh, undergo in which they attempt to meet their needs and build competencies. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that we do to young people and it's not something they actually have a choice about. Mm -hmm. What we are all trying to do uh, is to foster positive youth development so that young people form identities mm -hmm. that enable them to be successful and productive adults, but also um, satisfied adults who, who are meeting their own needs, mm -hmm. and also that they are able to form the kinds of competencies, particularly we'll be talking about school today, academic competencies, that enable them to reach their dreams and to be able to continue their education. Can you say a little bit more about the needs and the competencies that sure. youth development? So anyone who's been around a young adolescent uh, could easily relate to that they have a very often, depending upon the age, a very strong need for belonging. Yes, absolutely. Right? So this is something that is biological, psycho psychological. Uh, children and adolescents also have a need for safety, for belonging. Increasingly needs for mastery. That is, they have a drive to become competent at something. Then they also have, um, you know, a range of health needs, and also needs to think to be building the kinds of competencies that will enable them to be good decision makers, to problem solve, to be creative, uh, all the kinds of things. And and then particularly on the um, psychological development side things that we think of as both intrapersonal, understanding mm -hmm. themselves, um, being able to handle different uh, intensities of emotion, mm -hmm. uh, bounce back from frustration, mm -hmm. uh, and then on the interpersonal side, how do young people build their ability to relate well to, uh, to others and, f and be good citizens of a community? Now, of all of the things, the, the, the long list of things that schools are being held accountable for and being held responsible for, you don't often hear uh, that schools should be responsible for youth development. What do you see as the connection between youth development um, and educational achievement? I'd start framing it a different way. Mm -hmm. Schools are increasingly being held accountable for academic achievement. An understanding of youth development and the creation of a school culture that promotes positive youth development is an enabling condition mm -hmm. for good instruction and for young people to engage in their own education. Mm -hmm. 
So let me say what I mean there. We're asking adolescents in particular, the middle and high school level, mm -hmm. to accelerate achievement of higher and higher standards. Mm -hmm. Now, standards can seem very abstract. So what I'm talking about here, but let's use math as an example, okay. right? Uh, we're trying to bring all young people to levels in which they're mastering algebra and mastering um, more complex algebra and mastering, ge mastering geometry. In order to do that, kids are going to have to put out more effort, okay. <laughs> particularly those who didn't master some basic building blocks of that in the past. Uh, how do they do that? Mm -hmm. They have to figure, why, will it, why does a young person put out more effort? They put out more effort when they both have their needs for relationship met. Mm -hmm. They're doing it because they're in relationship with adults they're doing it in a relationship of peers mm -hmm. that are positive, mm -hmm. and they also see some connection to something meaningful for them. All of that is underpinned mm -hmm. by a youth development approach. How do young people grow and develop? They, young, they grow and develop by what they do, who they do it with, and how they make meaning. So getting back to the point about accountability, it's not that you should have a checklist of accountability for youth development. It's not an additional burden. It's that you start, you begin to think about the human dimension of schooling and what is the experience like for the young person mm -hmm. and to build the kinds of culture that energizes kids, helps them build a sense of trust, that they are willing to invest more of themselves in their learning. That helps the teacher the teacher both contributes to it and the student's contribution to it begins to have a feedback cycle that is positive and productive. Very often when people talk about youth development, they think of it in terms of social services and that it's uh, the social services sector that is responsible for that kind of development and for mm -hmm. helping young people uh, have a sense of belonging and a sense of connection to the communities in which they live. Why do you think that, or how is youth development different from social services, particularly within a school context. Right. So I think people got to that uh, thought from a problem orientation, that we need mm -hmm. schools are being asked to do too much. They need help. They need help from social service agencies mm -hmm. to help with the kinds of problems kids have. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, services are important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're absolutely critical for particular kids. But a youth development approach is, says it's, it's universal. All young people need to build what's, what often I feel is a limited way of thinking about non-cognitive uh, skills. I would say personal, social, mm -hmm. and, and skills, and the skills that enable things like problem solving and decision making really, and really cross over with cognitive skills. So that's essential for youth development. Mm -hmm. But what we know about adolescents in particular is that they easily get lost and disconnect. So you don't want to move to a treatment for each individual kid of social services mm -hmm. before or in place of actually structuring school in a way that enables the adults in the school mm -hmm. to support personalization and knowing of kids. So let me give you examples. So I've worked you know, in many schools and I've worked with, with many, many schools. You can structure a school mm -hmm. so that teachers uh, are teaching a single subject to 160 different kids. Right. And kids are having seven teachers who they have for 40 minute periods, mm -hmm. right? M many, many, many kids get lost in that. They even That's our traditional structure. Even extraordinary efforts by teachers to get to know all of those kids. Mm -hmm. You cannot get to know 160 kids who you see in 40 minute blocks, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes the guide, those, those 160 kids have three different guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. So the teacher doesn't even have just a single point of contact. Mm -hmm. What we know is that in any social context, which is school is a social context, that children and youth who have a primary person. Mm -hmm. Like when we think about elementary school, it's mm -hmm. often the teacher, right? Right. right? 
a primary person to connect with, solve their own problems much better with that primary person. They also connect. One of the key things about success in adolescence is connectedness, and that's a critical way of connecting in school. We also have to make it, as I was saying, enabling conditions. We have to make it easier for teachers. So on the very basic level, you can get to know 60 kids, okay. right? And then form relationships and be able to, to engage with them on, a, on the deeper and more complex level of, what, of, of their lives. Mm -hmm. And since we need so much investment from kids mm -hmm. to do the more complex tasks we're asking them to, it becomes even more critical that they have this connection. So you've been very clear that youth development is not a program, it's not an office, it's not um, necessarily anything additive, but it's a shift in mindset and a shift in approach. What does youth development look like? You mentioned a personalized environment mm -hmm. um, and changing the way that teachers um, regard and interact with their students so that they have more time to get to know, with, know them and provide support. What are some of the other practices that should be present and are evidence of a youth development approach in school design? Right. So first of all, it's, the, it's taking a step backwards. If you're the school designer mm -hmm. or if you're the principal of the school, right, it's kind of a, a, an assessment, right? What messages come to the student from the very beginning of when they're entering the school? Are you giving messages about community and belonging? As I said, one of the, mo one of the strongest uh, uh, developmental needs is for a sense of belonging. So how does everyone get a message about belonging? Right. right. And there are structures that you can put in place, any number of, of ways in which um, schools build a sense of identity with the, with the school. Which is critical Positive for young people feeling attached, attached. to school. Attached positive adult and student relationships so they are known. Right. Right, is every uh, adolescent, is, are they known well by someone? Then we get into the more challenging uh, dimensions of this, which is a sense of mastery, mm -hmm. for example. How does your school inform a child or a student about where they stand and where they're trying to get to? And is it uh, transparent to them what they can do mm -hmm. to get further. Sounds as if a key difference is that young people are participating in the development of their own mastery. They're aware of what the standards are and yes. can see and feel the progress and participate in the development of, of their learning. And depending upon where this young person is mm -hmm. and what age they are, a youth development approach would engage them in how they're going to get there and in building the productive persistence to do that. Mm -hmm. And we know some more about that. So uh, for example, there's some research that students who think mm -hmm. m more than twice a week, I don't belong in this class, even if they have better skills than some other kids in the class, right. stop working. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this interplay of confidence and mastery, getting kids understanding their mastery and understanding what the what the steps are to it mm -hmm. begins to build confidence which becomes a, a, a positive um, cycle. Okay. So, and, and, and uh, teachers need that from kids much more. One of the really important other aspects of youth development that I just want to say about school design is this notion of identity and meaning. Mm -hmm. So, it's very, very important in building in school design that the adults become self-aware of whether they are conveying that the activity, either micro or, or large, meaning the subject, mm -hmm. is meaningful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that every, every moment of our workday is meaningful, you know, is, mm -hmm. is intrinsically satisfying, is meaningful, but people are motivated to work harder, to, to put in more effort when they see that the underlying enterprise that they're engaged in even if it's the meaning is in the, the students together, the peer group together producing something. That's a really important motivator for kids. It's interesting that you mentioned that the adults in the building, which seems to imply that this is not just 
the role and responsibility of teachers to kind of shoulder this youth development right. load, yeah. or not even the load, but to, sh to shoulder this youth development responsibility and um, aspiration. What else would you say are some of the elements of, of design that involve other adults, that involve school leadership, and mm -hmm. even the structure yeah. of, of the school? So one of the things you just said, Sabrina, that I think is very important is <clears throat> shoulder the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So the key really insight here is that youth development happens whether we want it or not. Absolutely. <laughs> that is, it is a human process. Mm -hmm. So all we're all trying to do is influence the direction of right. it. And support the... <laughs> the direction of, uh, right, students will look for a peer group whether we're interested in their having that particular peer group or not. Right, youth development right. happens so whether we whether, support yes, it or not. Whether we support it enough. So, but once you have that insight mm -hmm. that we're trying for a positive youth development, then you think that all adults contribute to that. You contribute to, to that on the interpersonal level by showing respect. Mm -hmm. Right? Does the principal respect the teachers? Do the teachers respect the principal? Do the teachers respect each other? Do teachers respect kids? Do kids respect uh, teachers? I mean, this becomes a, a uh, this is why, why I say that it's about everybody in the in total environment, right? And it's also universal. I mean, that kind of notion of respect for all school staff yes. is just as important in affluent schools mm -hmm. where sometimes kids of privilege are not as respectful to adults who they see as not as having uh, the, the jobs that they, they look up to. So it's really a universal uh, point. Michelle, you've had a wealth of experience uh, opening schools around the nation. And what would you say um, are the ways in which schools can support positive youth development? The first thing that youth development says, we have to convey high expectations for learning. We have to convey the value of learning and, curio and support curiosity uh, of learning. Then we start talking about the competencies. Mm -hmm. What are the competencies in learning and what's needed to get there? So well, what do we want young people to do for college and career, to meet college and career standards? They have to read and understand a whole range of general content mm -hmm. in areas that require investment by a young person. Mm -hmm. Learning more vocabulary, getting in engaged. They have to write, right? When you're talking about high school, you're talking about kids who, uh, from a developmental point of view, do not want to be embarrassed. Actually, it's true in all the grades, but it gets stronger when you're an adolescent. So from a youth development perspective, mm -hmm. it's incredibly important that you're conveying high expectations in everything about mm -hmm. the student and finding ways in which you support them to be able to take risks academically. They have to, to build the kind of complex thinking skills uh, that are needed, the higher levels of communication skills, mm -hmm. and to tackle the levels of math and science mm -hmm. uh, that we're asking students, we, we need students to do now. Mm -hmm. We need to invite them and engage them mm -hmm. uh, to use their other, con their other competencies, the ones we were talking about when we were spending a lot of time talking about the psychosocial, right. and integrate that with, the, with academics. Okay, so that they become almost a foundational practice to uh, cognitive development, that young people are uh, engaged, they're participating in their own learning, um, and that they do have the psychosocial support um, to, to persist and to have some confidence about the work that they're doing. Right, but at the very level, very mm -hmm. simplest level of high expectations, mm -hmm. um, I remember the first year that I was working and, and uh, teaching in a community center mm -hmm. uh, with kids who dropped out of high school mm -hmm. and I had high expectations that we would put out a uh, youth newspaper. It was a bilingual youth newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so we got everybody focused on that we had to do a really high quality newsletter, so people had to learn to rewrite. Mm -hmm. They didn't write very well, right? Mm -hmm. But there was that notion of something meaningful, but that also had to be done at a level that was a high standard. Mm -hmm. We could give many, many examples of what this might mean. Now, it requires engagement. I mean, one of the reasons that uh, you know, science can be so interesting for students mm -hmm. is that you can study interesting phenomena in the world and study in groups and do, and do projects and practices. 
but it also requires investment mm -hmm. to um, tackle right. some kinds of of literacy challenges mm -hmm. uh, that 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 kids have, and so for the teacher, the support of the principles of belonging and engagement, so you get a positive peer group, right. can enable the productive persistence in kids. Michelle, can you unpack for us a little bit this notion of engagement? Because mm -hmm. I think um, it's a term that's used quite a bit. Uh, and some people, you've heard terms like edutainment come up, and people think that it's about entertainment. But I sense that engagement is different in youth development. It is different. Well, a different meaning you probably get from me that I don't think it's always fun, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that we need to, that. so to me, engagement is a process mm -hmm. that looks to invite and then support greater and greater effort and greater and higher levels of attention of the cognitive capacity mm -hmm. of kids. Remember, their brains are developing as adolescents. Early adolescents, the middle grades, is this, it's a period very similar to the time period around age two when kids are learning to, to, to speak. Mm -hmm. There's such great capacity and they need opportunities to exercise that brain. Mm -hmm. And engagement is what has to happen. In the worst case scenarios, you go into a classroom where you think the kids are on strike. It's about whether they are engaging with the higher order activities associated with the kind of academics that we're, right. we're uh, um, uh, teaching. And the fact that you use the, this term, you invite and support them, also seems to imply that there's a shift in their, their role in the classroom and the dynamic um, and the shared responsibility for learning. Is that Absolutely. what you've experienced? We're, that's what we're, we're, we're uh, always uh, pushing toward and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to, to have happen. You know, invite and support uh, might sound rosy, mm -hmm. but they're really, they're really not. I mean, you can invite and support someone to do something which can be a bit arduous mm -hmm. for the student, mm -hmm. right? right? But it's the notion that we can't actually do it for them. Youth development is about supports and opportunities, and that's why I'm coming back to it, Absolutely. that we often think it's only about supports. It's about challenges and opportunities for mastery. Mm -hmm. But being invited to meet those challenges and opportunities, Absolutely. which sometimes can have a very, they should have high standards, mm -hmm. but they also need to have high expectations with them, mm -hmm. so that you're always pushing the young person to develop further and further cognitively in school. What are some of the other um, factors that enable uh, schools to support positive youth development? Well, there's really five factors. Caring relationships we've talked about with personalization, primary person, high expectations from those people <laughs> and from the entire environment. Engagement, engagement in activities that give kids choice. That's another uh, aspect of youth development mm -hmm. that they, they want not random choice, but there, there are times in which they are practicing making good choices, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they're also practicing persisting in, in that. So engaging academics, right? Um, the fourth is opportunities to make contributions. Mm -hmm. So supports and opportunities, but opportunities to be a member of the community and make contributions to it, which you can build into school culture, as well as into instruction and, and, and classroom culture. And the fifth for schools is continuity. That is, um, that this message permeates, mm -hmm. uh, that youth development permeates. It permeates through the structures. Right. So the ways in which uh, time is used, the ways in, the ways in which resources are right. used in the school, uh, you know, schedules that enable this kind of experience, um, offerings, and that's where you do blend. Uh, into partnerships, mm -hmm. partnerships that enable kids to have um, clubs and activities mm -hmm. that uh, expand the day and also so often connect with academic where you might do some more writing or do chess or right. as well as doing sports and right. you know other uh, arts but also connect with community organizations mm -hmm. that can expand the opportunities and also expand the supports. Safety is one of the key factors schools have to think about in this. 
And uh, I think that it's really important to see safety from a youth development perspective. That is, how can you make the school safe as possible for kids while having them participate as much as possible in that, in that construction? They can't do it all themselves. There have to be boundaries. Absolutely. There have to be boundaries uh, for behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, but you want to be continuously reducing the number of students who are on the outside of the boundaries, rather than starting with kids who are falling out of the boundaries and, and as the way that you construct this. And as the way you begin to engage them. Yeah. Michelle, what would you say, um, it sounds then that youth development also has a tremendous amount of potential in terms of, I hate to use the word discipline, but certainly in terms of school culture and determining what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, not only in terms of youth behavior, but also um, the norms that a, a school might um, engage well, in. Well, absolutely. I mean, a positive youth development approach very much privileges safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it is a human need, right? And, uh, and it's also a responsibility of the adults in a community mm -hmm. with a, 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 in a school. But the difference in approach is, the, is in a, that positive youth development approach mm -hmm. is an approach which says we are going to build on the needs and competencies that, that adolescents need to develop to get their engagement and support mm -hmm. for this because this is part of learning. This is a critical part of learning and it will help support their own investment in, in academics as well as in citizenship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in a school. Uh, and how, what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. I mean positive decision making, practice in making good choices uh, is, 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 is really, really important. Also, in understanding that this is a shared responsibility rather than something that is imposed. Mm -hmm. Michelle, a lot of the work that you've done has been around redesigning high schools in particular. What role does youth development play in the redesign of high schools and why is it so critically important at that level? A high school is, you know, uh, an epicenter for development for, uh, for young people particularly challenging now, but let me start with that the first really important thing to think about high school in the college and career mm -hmm. um, context, preparing everyone for post-secondary education and mm -hmm. going on, which is what our world demands now, is that we need to think about a strengths-based approach. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean by that in youth development. Mm -hmm. Think about the whole young person, but we are so aware now of the weaknesses that high school kids are coming, coming with, given how far we have to get them now. Mm -hmm. So we know how many are below grade level in reading and below grade level in math. What we need to know is we need to the data on that, but we also need to know something about them that it will enable us to have information to build on their strengths, mm -hmm. right? It can be as simple as their interests some way, but it also can be what other kinds of competencies have they, have they developed? How do we get a broader assessment mm -hmm. um, of, of interests, of motivation, et cetera, so that we have something to build on? How do we also invite kids? There's been work in advan the, um, one of the programs advancing youth development in which groups of students who are significantly behind in mathematics come for the summer before and they get a program of high expectations and a program which they you know they do activities mm -hmm. uh, that kids like to do in the summer you know blending over to what we think of as the informal space and uh, an, an activity but they are also preparing to be leaders of their peer groups in freshman algebra they have never been asked to do something like right. this right. before in their lives They've been the kid who's been behind. Right. They are going to be the coaches to get everybody psyched so, and to keep the support. So we are building on their strength of personality mm -hmm. and their commitment and the attachment they've already made by being in this small group mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to help build the culture. That would be one example of a kind of youth, youth development. One of the key things about high school right now and in 
era of higher standards and preparing for post-secondary is that we have to get everybody through uh, the, the learning process to learn higher levels of content and skills. And we, it, you can do that a lot easier if you've built a peer support system and a peer culture that is enable, supporting and enabling that, as well as having great teachers who know their content and, and can, can work with the kids with interesting curricula. And, and just to be clear, strengths-based does not mean that we ignore the real challenges that young people have. No, we cannot ignore the real challenges that young people have, or we're doing them no service at all. Strength-based does not mean uh, losing your capacity to uh, properly assess mm -hmm. it or, uh, or romanticizing a mm -hmm. situation or lowering standards. Absolutely. A strength-based approach means to look for ways, whether it's strength of personality or other uh, kinds of capacities that kids, or just interests mm -hmm. that you can connect to something in the real world. Another aspect of high school that I, I want to uh, speak to is this notion of the need to recuperate mm -hmm. uh, academic skills that were not uh, built and during, in a very short amount of time and accelerate the accelerate learning right. and one of the other youth development approaches to that is to make the pathway more transparent for students of where they're going mm -hmm. um, tell back, me what does that mean well it means for the school in some way to backwards map and make that uh, make that uh, understandable mm -hmm. uh, to, to students entering ninth grade of w how, what is college? Where are they going? Mm -hmm. Is college one thing? Right. Or, you know, I think that aspiration and high expectations can be met more when they're real, mm -hmm. when people understand what they are, but when they can see a pathway and why what they're doing now has any relationship to where they might be able to go, and that where they might be able to go is more varied mm -hmm. than they may know. Remember, we're talking about identity. It's very hard to form an identity about something you've never experienced, never seen, right. heard, or know about, right. right? So you need to know about more, mm -hmm. and then you need to have, uh, you know, some way of seeing that you can get to mm -hmm. the identity that you're trying to form. And it sounds as if that's a conversation that would happen on day one, you don't start talking about college and career readiness in your junior year, which sometimes happens. No, but you start, you start on day it. one, but it doesn't have to be as abstract as the way I'm talking now. Mm -hmm. For example, lots of kids are interested in computers and computer science. Do they actually know what it might mean to be a computer engineer? Right. 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 And and what you can do if you do a two-year degree, what you can do if you do a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. uh, where is that offered in our county, our city, our, our area? Do we know anybody who's ever done that? Mm -hmm. What did they take in high school? Right. What kind of clubs might be interesting in this? And clubs leads me to another really important point, <laughs> which is youth development is about kids growing up in an entire community. Absolutely. The school is the core mm -hmm. of academic development, mm -hmm. but one of the great competencies that a school needs to develop, and we need to design for this, mm -hmm. is to be what I call porous. Um, that is, that the boundaries of school mm -hmm. are open. Right. And that, that for the young person, what they may experience as their school experience mm -hmm. may not be all official school. Right. It's that the school has constructed connections mm -hmm. with colleges, mm -hmm with community-based organizations that offer uh, internships, that offer other kinds of after-school supports and services. And exposure uh, to new exposure career to tracks. Exposure new, to new, new people, mm -hmm. but career tracks, but just also interesting things to do. Absolutely. Right? Arts, music, a range of things. Mm -hmm. And that also offer services and supports. Mm -hmm. Kids do experience mm -hmm. traumatic events when they're in, when they're in, in middle and high school. Uh, they, of course, they can experience any point in life, right. but there's particular strains that happen in adolescence that might mean that students need more intensive counseling sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some students need more intensive counseling. They need family support services. Mm -hmm. they, they need all, a range of mentors and encouragement 
that, who can encourage them, they also need some of that to be coming into the school. Right. Right, so professionals who uh, connect with particular kinds of courses, whether that's mm -hmm. people coming from museums right. and science institutes or, or uh, civic uh, organizations in some way that, or arts and music, in which they become, you begin to think about this. Mm -hmm. This can go all the way through to ways in which schools and some places have enabled crediting mm -hmm. for mastery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for uh, courses and experiences that students have, such as internships. And it's all toward that integration of building competencies while forming identity right. and positive identity. Michelle, you've named a number of redesign elements that um, are quite different from what we're traditionally used to seeing in mm -hmm. schools. You're talking about high expectations and um, porous and connected communities and environments that are highly personalized and where young people are able to develop caring and trusting relationships with, with adults and uh, contribute to the environment in which they, they, they mm -hmm. go to school. What kind of support, in your experience, do schools need to do this kind of redesign? What's critical well, for them? I'm glad you brought this up because um, I certainly don't want a youth development approach to feel like one more thing schools have Absolutely. to do. A youth development approach enables the kind of school culture mm -hmm. that supports more effort for learning. Right. So, be, but, but the other dimension of it is that in the challenge right now of bringing all students to higher standards, particularly to college and career ready standards, we need to think about the entire environment of the community and the school uh, as the resource for enabling young people to build mm -hmm. these kinds of, of uh, competencies and forming identity. So schools then need a particular competence, which gaining this competence actually enables it to be more productive and less daunting mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for the overarching challenge of reading Common Core. And that is the competence of becoming a porous school. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, the that the boundaries are permeable mm -hmm. rather than closed. Right. And that you are building strategically on the resources of the community, whether those are the resources of the after-school world and the kinds of opportunities for choice mm -hmm. and building creative, uh, you know, competence, arts, music, um, or extending other kinds of, of competencies in career through internships. You know, in all the years that I've worked on this, this has been a really critical mm -hmm. issue. So you want to mobilize for young people as many assets in the community that you can. So they have opportunities to build their creative competency through music and art that they, you know, build physical development, <laughs> that they have, uh, but that their, their days are, are rich in their own development, something all parents want to have for their, their kids. But the connection of it to school is when you keep having a learning mode uh, uh, way of thinking about it, right? Because you're, we're trying to build a school culture in which adolescents are investing in their own learning. We have so many more opportunities to make this productive now mm -hmm. than we had in the past. Uh, there are technology-based uh, resources. Mm -hmm. There are ways in which kids can use libraries. There are ways in which kids can produce different kinds of work that link the academic skills that they're, that they're getting with digital skills mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they, they may be getting in school, but they may be getting through any other community-based organization right. and begin to be Again, the key thing we're trying to get in youth development is for kids to see themselves as producers rather than consumers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? That is really, really important. So I think we're going to be seeing in the next several years schools that in their ways in which they are porous and build relationships with community uh, organizations and industry and higher education, that they are going to give young people an experience which for the student will be like a school experience, right. but which take advantage of the many, many learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if the school develops this competence in becoming porous, it actually then enables it, the acquisition and development 
of these more complex thinking skills to be reinforced mm -hmm. all the time for much longer periods of time and expanding their learning experience. Thank you, Michelle, for taking the time to help us better understand youth development and its impact on school redesign. Oh, thank you, Sabrina. It's a great opportunity to speak about a youth development approach to school design, which is so critically important for helping schools meet the challenge of bringing all of our students to college and career standards.